So last night a big trade happened. We're going to talk about it right now. And I need your help. So let's get into it. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. So last night we were on the live stream and we got news that broke and uh, that the Orioles have acquired ace pitcher Corbin Burns from the Brewers, which obviously there were a lot of Yankee fans upset about it and, and a lot of fans in shock and so on and so forth. And the package they got was Joey Ortiz, a 25-year-old infield uh, prospect. Is, he's a second baseman primarily, about a 212, no home runs, four RBIs last year, OPS of 448, so not flashy. And D.L. Hall, left-handed pitching prospect, is 25-0-0 oh, no, with a uh, no ERA. It's six innings pitch, uh, three innings pitch and six strikeouts. So a small sample size. And they also got a competitive balance pick, which is going to be the number 34 pick in the draft in 2024. Um, neither one of those guys was the top 10 prospect. Neither one of those guys was in the, in the top 100. So it's pretty safe to say that the Orioles got Corbin Burns on the cheap. They, the GM, and that's what, this is what it clearly looks like, the GM of the Orioles, whoever that might be, fleeced the GM of the Brewers. Maybe there's some other details that we don't know about what happened and why the Brewers took it on the cheap. But there's a couple of facts that we, you know, that we do know that are just well known that, you know, the Brewers didn't go around and call other teams and say, this is what the Orioles are offering us for Corbin Burns. Can you better it? They don't, they don't do that. GMs don't do that. Okay, they don't give you the details on the offer. Okay, they try to get people to up their offer, yes, but this came, this trade came out of nowhere, and they took clearly, clearly, an inferior package to, I think, every team in baseball would have probably offered a better package. So there's some details behind this that we just don't know. I'm not going to speculate until we get more details. Okay, because the ask for the Yankees is well known now. They want you know. People, the expectation was the Yankees were either going to give Spencer Jones or Chase Hampton or Jason Dominguez. All three are in the top 100. All three are top 10 prospects for the Yankees. Okay, And they got none of those. None of them from the Orioles. So we don't know. But I have had a fair, sh fair sh uh, share of people last night blaming Brian Cashman for it, saying that he was asleep at the wheel. Um, and, and when I asked, please prove that, or is it the, the Yankees knew what was going on? They chose not to blah, blah, blah. I asked people, can you prove it? Because they didn't prove it. And I get called a Cashman apologist, Cashman fanboy. So I'm asking for your help. Can you help me? Can you please make it make sense? How in the world is this Brian Cashman's fault? Again, this is a simple question. Okay. Opinions without proof are just going to be that, opinions without proof. So how do we know that the Yankees, and particularly Cashman, knew what the package was and chose not to better it? And that would apply to every other GM in baseball, too. Okay, this is the, this trade stinks. Well, it stinks for the Brewers, but it's great for the Orioles. They have the number one farm in baseball and did not use any one of those guys in their top ten to get this man. And now they're going to have new ownership, a competent ownership, who clearly wanted to make an impact by being aggressive early on. And they're going to have the resources to give this man an extension. He's probably going to still want to test free agency, but they will have the, the resources to extend him, potentially give him a bigger offer than expected before he gets to free agency. So they're in a better position than the Brewers. But I mean, I mean the um, Orioles. But I'll say this just like I said the Dodgers. Okay, just because they got him doesn't mean they're going to, you know. Win the American League doesn't mean that let's not put put them in the World Series just yet. Second, I can put the Dodgers in the World Series just yet. Okay, they have to play a 162 game season. This isn't basketball; it's 82 or football where it's 17. This is 162, and he's only pitching every fifth day. 30, 35 games, Corbin Burns, on a good year. So, can we make this make sense? How is this Brian Cashman's fault? I don't understand it. I was asking people questions, like asking people about it last night. Nobody could give a credible answer on it. So are we being fed this by some other sources, some other content creators that just that have learned or taught people to 
figure out a way to blame Cashman for stuff, well, no matter what it is. These are just simple questions I'm asking. And I need your help in helping me make this make sense. Because um, it is very puzzling. Very puzzling. And again, well done fleece job by the, by the Orioles. Yeah. I would be blaming the GM of the Brewers before I blame the GM of the Yankees. We weren't even involved in this trade. And who knows? We didn't even know that it happened. It just, just came out of nowhere. They could have been shocked by it like us. Saw the breaking news and said, you did what? You got him for what? You know, why didn't you call me? Like, we don't know if the Brewers called the Yankees. We have no idea. No idea. So there's got to be some other something else going on. I mean, did, you know, we had some people suggesting that Corbin Burns might have forced their hand. Maybe he did. We know he was unhappy there. He wanted out more than more than we thought, right? And again, this is the guy, Corbin Burns. Okay, that's the guy right now. And you know, there was talk about the Yankees uh, wanting to. Well, talk about beat writers from beat writers that the Yankees were going to wait for him until the trade deadline and try to get him. Then, well, that's obviously not going to happen now. So, um. You know, it is what it is. Now I expect the Yankees. I do expect the Yankees to make a counter move of some sort. They're probably going to want to add a starter or a reliever. Potentially, most likely, I'm cheap. Why do I say that? And I've said this repeatedly. You know, everything at this point, because the Yankees are over the Cohen threshold, is double. Which is one reason why they offered Snell this contract before the Yankees were over the threshold. Not after it. Okay. He rejected them. They pivoted to Stroman. They're over the threshold now. Different story. Because now his $25 million turns into $50 million. This is basic math, and I think it's important to point out. Okay. Completely different ballgame. Completely different ballgame. So could he fall to their laps? I have no idea. I doubt it now at this point because of the math, because of what he would cost. And he's not going to bring double the value. So, or Montgomery, I don't think he'll fall to the Yankees' laps. I don't think. You know, I do think if they trade for a pitcher, it's likely going to be a starter or a reliever or both. Now, the Brewers also designated left-handed reliever Ethan Small last night for assignment. 26-year-old, hard-throwing lefty. He has six years of control. That could represent a Cashman-type move of bringing in another reliever, especially since Wandy walked away. They could get this guy in the cheap with six years of control. So we'll see if the um, – he was, he was DFA, so he's going to be put on the waivers. And if he gets if they he gets through waivers and gets to the point, there's an order of waivers. So the Yankees are generally at the bottom of the list. If, it, if they pass through all these other teams and it gets to the Yankees' point and the Yankees claim them, they might have gotten another good reliever here to add to the bullpen. So, and because speaking of relievers, Keenan Middleton, ex Yankee who was traded by the White Sox and Yankees, signed with the St. Louis Cardinals last night. So he's gone too. Wandy's with the Padres, Middleton's with the Cardinals. So that just, yeah, it's just a little bit more of, you know, rubbing salt into the knife wound for the Yankees fans. But again, this is what happens. Unfortunately, this is what happens. And again, keep it in mind, whatever Middleton's contract is going to be, the details have not yet been disclosed as of this morning, whatever details of this contract are, it's going to be double. This comes to the Yankees, so they have to be a lot more selective with whom they sign at this point, which is why I think more trades are going to be, uh, you know, moving forward, at least for this offseason, are going to be happening instead of free agent signings. And a guy like Keith and Small, they could pick up off waivers. They pick him up off waivers. He's already added immediately to the 40-man, so they'd have to make a corresponding roster move too. I could see that, adding another left-handed reliever. And if they've already added three relievers, two of which are lefty, to an already top three bullpen. Yeah, they've lost one of the, yeah, they've lost Nestor. Not Nestor, excuse me, Middleton. Okay. But they've gained Cody Morris. They've gained Victor Gonzalez. They've gained uh, uh, the kid the other day from, from the uh, Astros and the Blue Jays, another hard throwing lefty. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Bass Case. My apologies on his name, but they added another hard throwing reliever. So they've gotten better. They've improved. They've beefed up their bullpen, despite what people say. Doesn't really matter that they didn't sign Hayter or Neris or Jordan Hicks, who's apparently going to be used in the rotation now. I don't know how they're going to translate him, transition him into the rotation in, in uh, San Francisco, but they are. So we'll see how that goes. But 
let me know what your thoughts are, gang. Okay, and make sure that if make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. If you enjoy the content, the like button's always great. If you want to be kept in the loop of all things Yankees, hit that subscribe button too. Okay. I thank you so much for both. I want to make sure that you get out all the info. And again, please make it make sense for me. That's the help I'm asking for. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for anything else. Um I'm just asking, can you make it make sense? How is this Brian Cashman's fault? Please enlighten me. Thank you. Have a good day. Talk to you next time.